I was saying that the Muslims that like, utilize philosophy, they don't use it to establish aqidah in of itself, however they use it as a defense mechanism to counter-argue the arguments that these philosophers bring. So We are not in need of that, because that brings more confusion. But like, so, so how do you, but the thing is, if you ask, if a philosopher gives you principles of logic yeah. and he presents that to you, like, you can't just say to them, because Allah said it. Obviously, they don't accept the premise of Allah to begin with. No, no, wait, wait. Firstly, I'm not saying you have to say Allah said it straight away, but I got the argument from the Quran. And I'm not saying don't use sound reasoning. The philosophy of reasoning is not sound reasoning. Okay, so, so what you so, just did, so, yeah. so what you did when a philosopher came to you, you are already submitting to his way. So, but, okay, so let's not say philosophy, but ilm al-kalam. So, same thing, ilm al-kalam is same thing. But it's, but it's not used to establish it, meaning we don't, we don't play with them. We go from our grounds. No, that's what they said before, Akhi. Before, that's, I, agree, I understand what you're saying, yeah? Mm. You're saying that we use philosophy or kalam, mm. which is a part of philosophy, we use it to refute them, not to establish our religion, yeah? I counter them, yeah. yeah I counter, yeah? Okay. The Sahaba, when they went to Persia and Rome, were the philosophers there? I'm not too sure. Of course, he was, was philosophy, yeah. Persia, force. Yeah, yeah force and Rome, okay. Did the Sahaba did this way? No, okay. Sahaba, the Quran, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu gave da'wah to people in Medina. He gave da'wah to Jewish people. And remember, Jewish people, they were heavily influenced by philosophy too. Did Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam start telling them Al-Jawhar, Wal-A'rad, wal ashsam and all of this, or there is a, there's attributes, or there is parts, and the, no, Allah, Allah said, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, or if someone in Islam said, some people, what they do, because they've already been praising the Quran, they hate Quran, so what you do, you get the argument from the Quran, you know, from the Quran, and you say, look, either you create yourself, or you create by nothing. Perfect, you understand? But, in the time but philosophers, what they say, define nothing. Yeah. What are you doing? Muslims who love this the, the way of talking, he starts going to nothing, then he forgets the main points. Yeah. But do you see at the time of Nabi Sallallahu that was at the time, it's at the time of the Salaf, you see, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a link between the heavens and the earth. And at the time of the Salaf, you meaning that Iman was unshakable, right? Unbreakable. But so our Iman Shaykh, what? No, meaning that now these arguments started to present themselves in time more of the Khalaf, right? When why, why? Let us step by step. Why the Khalaf used Kalam? Let us go to Tariq for you to understand my brother. Safe. 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 Mashallah, beautiful name. Shem Siddin. May Allah bless you. Safe. Go on. So what is, where is your country from? In Malaysia originally. Malaysia, Mashallah. Yeah. So let us understand why the Muslims start using Al Kalam. Do you know the history? As far as I know, they utilized the Ilm al-Kalam to defend the religion. Who started first? The, the main figures, as far as we know, is Imam Ashari. No, it's not. It's not. It's not he didn't start it, but obviously the main figures. No, or oh, Jabr Safwan. Jabr Safwan, he was in Samarkand. Okay, yeah. Okay? Yeah. He met people called Sumania. Sumania, people that do not believe in Allah. Okay, and they ask him, Have you seen your God? Of course, they start bringing doubts. Okay, Jabr no Safwan was influenced by Greek philosophy and the Sumerian, not Sumerian, and um, oh, subhanAllah, is it Sumerian? Uh, what do they call the man? Sabia, Sabia, okay, Sibians, yeah. When he started using philosophy, okay, the Salaf, did they support him or rebuke him? Rebuked him. Rebuked him. Mm -hmm. So now, we should, Prophet Muhammad said to follow Salaf. So if there was khair in Ilm al-Kalam. So what happened with Ilm al-Kalam? When he started using Ilm al-Kalam, he led him to negate Allah's attributes. Philosophy is a disease. That's what the argument was. Our argument, we cannot use the Quran and Sunnah and guess them because they don't believe in Quran and Sunnah. Okay? So what we have to use? Their ways. But their ways corrupted. And it's not upon you because I understand you can show them, like Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, study philosophy, not to use it to. to no, not to, no, no, just to refute to defend Islam. No, to show contradiction in that philosophy that we are not in need of it. That's what's aim. 
That's why it's always Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah. You understand? Yeah. So, philosophy that was, Al-Mul Kalam was used, Imam Ahmad rebuked it, Shafi'i was speaking to one of his students. And he started using Imam Kalam. He said, leave that. It's a disease. Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah ta'ala, when Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah ta'ala, was asked, why Al-Mul Kalam is dangerous? Because Akhir Karim, say, if Allah bless you, philosophy has a lot of ambiguity. You understand? For example, they say, Allah is spaceless. Have you heard that? Spaceless. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about this statement? It depends what the intended meaning behind it is. Barakallah. Correct. Yeah. Because spaceless, what do you mean by that? When the full the Alimul Asha'ira, Maturidis, and they used it to negate Allah is above the creation. You understand? So when we say spaceless, what do you mean by that? You understand? Because we say Allah is above the creation. You want to call it space or not, it's up to you. But if you say space that is created and Allah is surrounded by his creation, we reject that. And if you say means that Allah is above the arsh, above his creation, we accept that. And that's what the Quran and the Sunnah teaches. They say Allah is timeless. Timeless, yeah? Again, this term, timeless, is not in the Quran. Why this, this term was used? To negate Allah eternally is the creator, eternally is the most merciful. To negate Allah's actions. But is that, I don't think that's the way they intend it. When they say time, that's meaning they mean time as in the creation of Allah. No, that's what they intend. That's why they negate Allah eternally. Asha'i ever met to read this, that's what they say. They don't, they don't affirm that Allah eternally the creator and everything. Are they using yeah. language to frame the conversation? They're using the term that is a disease, it's a poison. You know, that's why we're not in need of that. Defend Islam with the Quran and the Sunnah. And Naam, you can give analogies. Prophet Muhammad SAW did that. Imam Abu Hanifa, when he wants to debate an atheist, and he said to them, if I tell you there is a boat, and a boat has it's been loaded with many items, and it was sweeping or, um, what do I call it, on the seas, going slowly and smoothly until it reaches the shore. And he said, that's crazy, without uh, no one. Said, he said, what about this creation, the upper? Why are you showing them? Why you showing them? This creation must have, there's knowledge behind it. And there's order behind it. You know, like what, so we see the Salaf use a, a sound reason analogies. Like Prophet Muhammad, when a man came to him, he said, oh, messenger of Allah, I'm a white person, my wife, she's white. And we have a black child. Prophet said, do you have a camel? He said, yes. He said, do you have a red camel? He said, yes. He said, how? He comes from, he said, from white camels. He said, because of what? Because of the lineage. Like one of the offspring was red. He said, likewise. So he used what? Analogy? No problem. But when you come to philosophy that we use and Imam Kalam, which clearly oppose the Quran and the Sunnah. That's why they start saying Mujassima. They start saying Allah has, negates Allah has a body. And he said, if Allah moves, because it's based upon the 10 categories of Aristotle. That God is, must be moveless, uh, uh, motionless, timeless, spaceless, you know, all of these terms are not in need of it. Because if you accept the term already, it's dangerous. Be with the Quran and Sunnah, if you're going to study it, and you already study the Quran and Sunnah and study the Aqidah Salafiyyah correctly, with clear proofs, and you want to study philosophy to refute it and expose their way, Alhamdulillah, that's what the Salaf did. Yeah, have fun. See how you said on philosophy. See what that like, um, science is kind of philosophy as well. Why do you say that's What is explain that to me? The science is the pattern of regularity that's found in nature. You know what I mean? It's not testing repeating and repeating again. But that's a that's a type of philosophy. Of so why is the thing? Okay, what you said about the Western uh, the Western science is based upon a Greek philosophy. I know Greek philosophy is strong now. No, no, but it's based upon that science. So science was started by um, a Muslim man. No, 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 it's not science, no. The method. The method, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm talking about the method, actually. Okay, yeah. Don't mix between the method and the science itself. You understand? I'm talking about science as a whole. The science is based, I'm talking about the Western, especially the Western science. The Western science now is based upon a Greek philosophy. You know, it's based upon a Greek philosophy, no doubt. And I would advise people, brothers, to read the works of Sheikh Abu Iyad, Amr Rafiq. Likewise, there is, a, mashallah, one of the doctors and from Egypt called Abu Fida, from Sabin Mas'ud. Mashallah has articles in English and Arabic. And I will, I will give you his name and check it. For both of them, check. They made, they have two lectures about philosophy and the danger of Ilm al-Kalam. 
and how علم الكلام علم الكلام is a poison أخي look أخي it's opening you to die to people yes for example I'll give you example imagine there's you know the concept of evil yeah. some Muslims have written a book to refute it yeah that doesn't make any sense to me you know why why okay I can refute it easily without writing a book you know why they had to write a book because you know why to refute the concept of evil oh, okay. if there's evil do you know why because some muslims abide by the way of the western philosophers not all that because you know there's daruriyat in islam daruriyat daruriyat is known by necessity does the does the philosophers accept that they don't accept that they, they have, you have to prove everything yes you have to prove everything and now when we know that daruriyat that Allah is the creator of everything. Whatever occurs, there's a wisdom behind it. Simple. Okay? You can give examples. I'm not saying to give examples, but it's known. So when you start debating in depth about it, you bring more confusion than clarity. Because why? They said the hardest thing to prove is the most obvious thing. You understand, Akhi? Yeah. You agree with me, Safe? I, I agree with you, but still. Yeah. The same. That's what you think. That's what I thought too. Yeah. I, don't, I don't agree with like Greek philosophy, Aristotle, the army. Yeah, but not only there's Indian philosophy, Egyptian philosophy, Western yeah, philosophy. Yeah. Like, yeah. But that's a good point as well, though. Yeah. When he says that philosophy changes through times and places, so when you get the statements of the Salaf who rebukes philosophy, do you not think that the philosophy they were referring to was that philosophy used by Jahim and Safwan? No, 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 no. It's the same because why? Philosophy was in our time, like I said. Philosophers in our time, not Jahim and Safwan time, in our time. If you tell them they are something called fitra, something daruriyat, do they accept it? No, they say you have to prove it. What's his name? You remember the uh, British uh, philosopher who wrote a book about how to prove daruriyat? Daruriyat is no, there's no, there's no need proof. That's contradiction because daruriyat is self-evident. It's like you proving to me, I'm speaking to you. That doesn't make any sense. So from that, that's what I'm saying. Okay, there is certain things. That's why Islam comes with addressing daruriyat. So any human being who's sincere doesn't have an evil heart yeah. will accept it but someone who's poisoned has an evil heart will never be satisfied with anything that like even yeah. even if you bring even if you use philosophy to refute doubt mm -hmm. about uh, evil they have another question yeah. you understand mm -hmm. they will have even like for example uh, 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 sorry because i'm speaking more forgive me about people you know um, there's a brother from america he tried to refute the doubt I never asked God to create me. Why he created me? Yeah, I never asked. The way you refute it, Alhamdulillah, is simple. You don't even entertain it because it doesn't make any sense. One brother said, you know what he said? He said, I, I would say to this guy, imagine I invite, you wake up and you see food in front of you. Yeah, food in front of you, and you eat it. Would you not thank me? You would thank me. He said, yeah, yeah. But someone who has evil heart, like philosophers, generally speak, what he says. He said, yeah, but if I don't eat it and I eat it, I don't say thank you. Would you punish me? Why are you going to punish me? Who brings doubt? See? But a Salafi comes in. Your question doesn't make any sense. Because if you need Allah to ask you, then he has to create you. If Allah creates you, you already submit that he's the creator and you are the created. He is the Lord of everything. Then you should submit to him. You don't question him. Simple. Allah Akbar. Salafi way. So you what you do? You refute the question. You don't even entertain it. Alhamdulillah. I don't leave it, Allah, politics. Allah. No, I mean, like, look, they're scared from Allah. They're scared from Allah, you know. Barakallah, Vic. Do you know why, Akhwa, yeah? Do you know why? Do you know the people? Sorry. Do you know why people don't accept, you know, everyone? Do you not think there's a middle ground, though? Where, because I know people who are sincere and genuinely ask philosophical questions who come from a sincere, they're asking from a point of sincerity. But there's no what way... What is a philosophical question, for example? Give me an example of that. Because I'm not saying if someone's sincere, mm -hmm. like, uh, understand me correctly. Alhamdulillah, I mean, I've been here 15 years. I give yeah. da'wah. Mm -hmm. Anyone, even they come with the most ridiculous question, I still answer it. Yeah. And if I see they're sincere, I carry on. If I'm not sincere, I will rebuke them with the Quran. Brother, sorry to cut you. 
Well, let's go back to something I want to mention. You said about the kuffar do not believe in Allah, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So there's no point saying Allah said, yeah? Yeah. That's not correct. That's, that's incorrect what you said. Do you know why? No, I mean, I said that they don't believe in the premise of Allah. So to say Allah said to but them. Believe. Yeah, but you don't have to say Allah said. I understand that Uthamin mm. said that. But even you say Allah said because you want to accept it or not, you don't want to accept it. Because when Allah said something, it's not just when Allah said something, it's something which any human being with a sound reasoning and a sound natural inclination will gravitate towards it. Maybe has some doubt, can refute it. Let me bring you back, show you the danger of your statement. The kuffar of Quraysh, they never believed in their judgment. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's nothing will parish make us parish except the time. Mm -hmm. So why Allah is threatening them with their judgment when they don't even believe in the day of judgment? You tell me. You see, Akhi, because deep down they do believe, mm -hmm. but they're too arrogant to, sub to submit to that. So let us use the Quranic way. The Quranic way, you know, Quran is powerful. That's what Quran from Allah. Quran has intellectual arguments mm -hmm. and psychological arguments. Some people, regardless how much intellectual argument, they're too arrogant to accept that. So what you do, you change it that, fear Allah. And you're gonna stand before Allah. Regardless how many times you're gonna try to use a nonsensical argument against your creator, you will die. And there's a punishment for you. Bro, and yeah. You know, you can't, uh, sorry, Habib, and you don't have to say it loudly, say you're gonna die and stand before your God, the one that created you. If you accept it, leave him with this. You understand? So that's, that's that, if you say, so what, there's many verses where Prophet them with the day of judgment, threaten them with the punishment, with the hellfire, because they, they believe in it. But because the, the, why people don't accept, why people don't follow Islam? Either there's a psychological reason or a social reason. Either yeah. psychological factor or social factor. What do I mean by psychological factor? Psychological factor, the person is arrogant, he knows the truth. Or he knows that Islam teaches something which is forbidden that he desires and he likes. But he's not going to tell you. Some people, they will say it openly. I like this, and that's why I don't become Muslim. But majority of times, he's going to try to justify his disbelief and not accept Islam by quote unquote philosophical arguments and intellectual arguments. Or a social factor, like I believe Bob and other than them, they believe Islam is the truth. But because people look up to them amongst their community, so what they do, they start looking for any argument against Islam to justify their disbelief. Or they know if by accepting Islam, their own family will go against them. You understand? So that's what it boils down to. Not it boils down to Islam is not clear to them, or the, the message in the Quran, no, it's clear to any human being. Wallah, I've been doing that for the last 15 years, Akhi Saif. Any human being as, as, who is sound reason, non Muslim, atheist, agnostic, I spoke to a woman from LGBTQ community. She was a lesbian. Akhi, the first time I spoke to her, I broke down Islam to her. She said, You know, it makes sense to me. I said, Become Muslim. She said, I'm, I, I have something to tell you. I said, Oh, come on, what's going to tell me, you know? She said, I'm a lesbian. I said, Okay, as a lesbian, okay, as haram in Islam, it's a major sin, it's dangerous, no doubt about that. I broke it down for her. Why is haram in Islam? She said, You know what? I want to become Muslim. Wallahi, what I use, she's an atheist, Akhi. I use the Quran, I told her Allah said, you know, but some people, she said, if they have something against Quran, if you say Allah said, just shut down straight away, just get the argument. Yeah, Quran is sufficient. Sufficient, Akhi, for every time and every place. 